Welcome to the Next Level American Dream podcast, brought to you by Thompson Multifamily Group. Your hosts, Abigail and Sean, will discuss how you can take your American dream to the next level through real estate investing, business practices, and personal development. Join us as we share our experiences as a father-daughter duo who are trying to accomplish their goal of financial freedom. We hope you learn more about how to define and achieve your American dream. Here's another episode of Next Level American Dream. On today's episode of Next Level American Dream, we will be discussing conventional investments such as stocks, bonds, and mutual funds in comparison to alternative investments like real estate and more specifically multifamily. To give us more insight on this topic, we will be joined by a friend of ours, Sean Winslow. Sean is the founder and managing partner of Greenbrier Capital Group. He has an aptitude for investing in multifamily apartments, providing his clients with significant passive income and generational wealth creation. His passion is helping his investors achieve financial freedom by reducing their dependency on conventional income and investments such as stocks, bonds, and 401k plans so they can pursue their own dreams. In addition to pursuing attractive risk-adjusted returns for his investors, Sean strives to enhance the life of every tenant, team member, and individual that comes into contact with Greenbrier and its partners. Prior to founding Greenbrier Capital Group, Sean worked with one of the top 10 largest investment firms in the world, and through his passion for helping others pursue their own financial goals, he was able to bring in over $1.5 billion in assets. This is all to say that he has had hands-on experience in both realms of financial investing, and we are excited to tap into his knowledge and share it with you. Hi, Sean. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks. Thank you guys for having me. It's an honor to be on. Yeah, thanks for being on the show. We appreciate it. Well, I want to just start with, you know, you've come from, as everybody heard in the introduction, you come from a financial background, working with one of the top 10 financial institutions in the country. You brought in about $1.5 billion in business for them. Tell me kind of how you, what was the transition from that background into what you're doing now? How did, how did that kind of go? Yeah. So I joined, I already out of college. I, I started at the previous firm I worked for in the financial services industry where we provided products such as ETFs, mutual funds, and smart beta to our clients who would then turn around and, you know, provide them to their investors to grow their nest egg. So I got into the business to help others, you know, build that nest egg so they could live a comfortable and a dignified retirement in life. And I thought that's what I was doing for a while. And then finally I saw the light, these products, you know, they're not cost effective. They're not tax efficient, a lot of hidden fees and volatility essentially erodes your portfolio. So I saw the light and I decided to make a change. I always knew that real estate would be my end game. And I think maybe from some limited mindset that I just kept pushing that off thinking like, Oh, I need to get more experience. I need to learn more. You know, I need, I need capital to do this. And then eventually I just saw the light and realized, no, I can do this now. Other people are doing this. And so, yeah, I quit my job and went headfirst into the multifamily game. Yeah. That's so you, you sort of saw that the conventional Wall Street financial instruments were rigged in favor of the house, not, not necessarily for, for the customers they were serving 100%, right? Is that, is that kind of what you're, you were thinking? Yeah, it's, it's like a, you know, it's like a casino, you know, essentially a legalized casino in every state. Yeah, they're, they're out for themselves. There's hidden fees that no one would really know about unless you really dig. And sometimes even when you dig, you can't find where these fees are going, you know. There's revenue sharing with firms. Essentially, that's like pay to play. There's, it just trickled, the fees just trickle down the line to who gets them. And that's all that is doing is just eroding at your return. And on top of that, you have no say, even though they say when you buy a stock, you have ownership, but you don't have any say unless you're a big institution, but that's a whole different game. You know, right, if you're exactly. owning 5% of, the, of that stock, but that's, like I said, that's a whole different game. So yeah, I just knew it's not the place where everyone should put all their capital. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not here to say you shouldn't be in there, but you need to diversify into alternative assets. Well, there's a whole world of, of non-conventional 
investments that people can make that just don't get the airtime or the play that you get from, you know, the, the stocks and bonds, mutual funds, the traditional stuff. And so that's kind of the space you're in now. You've decided to go into uh, multifamily investing and tell me, tell me why that was the direction you chose or, or why is that the vehicle that you think is most suited for what you're trying to achieve? Yeah. So when I knew I needed to make a change, when I knew what I was doing wasn't the best solution for people, I started to do research and, and I knew in the back of my mind, real estate was always there, like I said earlier, but I wanted to see what successful people, where they were putting their money, where their plan for retirement was. And I looked at both successful people that I knew and people I didn't know. And majority of the time it came down that these people were building a real estate portfolio on the side, if that wasn't their main gig. So let's say if they owned a company or they were successful in some other profession, their side portfolio was real estate. And they were, they were basing that to be their retirement. For instance, my grandfather was a very successful businessman. He's also very successful in the stock market. I think he would be laughing or rolling over his grave now that I'm kind of giving the stock market a hard time. But at the end of the day, he always told me his retirement was his real estate portfolio. So at the end of the day, he kind of, he kind of had, had the same thinking. And, and that's such a common thing when you're looking at successful people. They know the power of cash flow, of appreciation, you know, the tax benefit that comes along. So you can protect your hard earned hard earned capital, not, you know, give it all away. And then the fact that tenants are paying down your mortgage on top of leverage, that's just really powerful to build legacy wealth that you can not only pass on your kids, but your kids' kids, and then also give back to the community, which is very important to me. Yeah. So it's an asset that gives you something tangible to hold on to. It gives you something you can leverage against. It gives you depreciation tax benefits. It gives you a multitude of, of wealth building strategies that you just don't get from, from a conventional, I guess, investment portfolio. So in terms of wealth creation, real estate is, is an, an excellent tool. And I guess that's what you're, that's why you think it's the best path for you is right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Like if you, if you look at stocks, you're essentially just on paper, you know, at the end of the day, if everything goes bad, kind of like the situation we're in right now, what is that paper doing for you? Right. Nothing. Right. And in order to see any benefit from that, like we pay our bills monthly. So if we want to pay our bills, we have to sell the stock. And then at a time like this, where if you've lost 30, 40, 50% on an individual holding and you are forced to sell, you just lost a lot of money. Whereas real estate spits off cash flow, which you can pay your monthly bills with. And you're not forced, if you're operating correctly, you're not forced to sell. And that's very powerful. You can weather the storms when, when certain downturns come. Yeah, just to give a side note here for our listeners, the, the time that, that Sean is on the, on the program with us, we're, we're all in a shelter in place order from the government and our it's local and city government, and state governments, and the stock market over the last, I guess, 10 days, really 12 days, uh, business days has lost. What is it? It's probably up to about almost 50% now, right? Sean, I guess they've recovered a little bit today, but we're at about 40 to 50% losses right now in the, in the Dow. The Dow, I think is a little over 30. Um, 30. But yeah, you're, you're right. It's clawed back. I think last time I looked today, it was up four, four and a half percent. Yeah. So the, the volatility in the markets right now is just, is just crazy. You know, I know we've lost a lot of net worth with my wife's portfolios. You know, I'm not in, I don't have any stock bonds or mutual funds. I, everything I do is real estate, but my wife is in those, in those things and her net worth just to just tanked. It's, I keep laughing at her, you know, <laughs> it's not really funny, but it's funny to me because my real estate's kind of doing fine, you know? So, but um uh, anyway, so that's kind of just a side note. So people have got a frame of reference of the time period that we're in and it's, you know, the stocks are just, uh, no one knows what's going to, where the floor is or what's going to happen really next. And, and, but well, tell me kind of, what are you doing now with your non-conventional investing and you're, you, I guess you've started your own business and you're trying, you're working with people to, to, to facilitate their investments in non-conventional investments, right? Correct. What, what is it, what is it that, what, what is it that you're doing? What steps are you taking to, to, to do that? You're, you're looking at multifamily deals, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's multifamily. And, and as you know, it's, it's, this is a, a game where you partner with a lot of people, whether that be other operators, brokers, investors. So my main focus 
has been to cultivate those relationships, primarily on the investor side. I've been, been building out you know, my, my investor pool. I was actually going to have uh, an investor event coming up here, but with the situation you just referenced, that had to be put on hold. But yeah, I've just been focusing on building those relationships. You know, we gotta, you got to find the capital and you got to find the deal. So that's primarily what I've been focusing on. Right. So you're bringing, so you're bringing, I guess you're really bringing an education to people that are looking for an alternative to conventional investing. And you're sort of, you're sort of putting, putting that in front of people and saying, Hey, look, there's, there's another way to do this so that you can have a a successful retirement. Right. That's, that's kind of the process you're going through now. Right. Correct. It's, it's really powerful to talk about it today to invent your investors and potential investors, just because think about it. If someone had just retired at the beginning of the year or planned on retiring at some time this year. Oh yeah. They, they can't do that now. If, if they're, if they were planning on living off a of 401k and an IRA, that's unfortunately it's sad. It's not going to happen. They're going to have to go back to work or, or find a, another way of cash flow, which is, is going back to work. So it's a great time to, to share what we do with people and, and, and let them know if, if they had some exposure to this asset class, they probably wouldn't have to go back to work because yeah, cash flow might get thin in the coming months, but with what was just announced in terms, you know, of Freddie Mac and some of the other agencies that are going to be, you know, forgiving some mortgages for a time, a time period, cash flow still should be pretty strong. And we're also going to see opportunities in the next months to acquire properties at a lesser value than we would have just two weeks ago. So it's, I think it's a very important time though. Anybody who is, you know, a syndicator operator should be really hitting home these points to their investors. Well, you don't know. So if you're, if your portfolio is primarily in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, those, those conventional uh, tools, you don't know when it's going to recover. You have no idea. It's, it's entirely all out of your hands. It's up to the institutions that sort of set those rules on wall street. I mean, it could be a year before you get any sort of traction in your, in your portfolio again with a multifamily property, you know, it's, it's going to be a blip with cash flow initially you know, tenants may not be able to pay because they lost their job through this whole process and those sorts of things. But that stuff, once you work those things through, you can see a recovery timeline in your business. You know, an apartment building operates as a business and you can kind of predict based on who's paying you and who isn't paying you, right. how long it's going to take you to recover that, right? So you can kind of see a horizon of recovery in a, in a multifamily type investment. Whereas with Wall Street, it's just whenever those guys get around to making things more valuable, right? Right. And then, and that company could close up shop or, you know, do a, a number of things that you have no control over. And there couldn't be admitted. The recovery could, like you said, take a lot longer than in terms of the stock market. So right. it, I don't know if you want to get into volatility, but if people don't realize, yeah, the market was up 30% this year or last, excuse me, last year, 2019 which was great. Everyone was happy. But now that the market is down 30%, people don't realize how the power of volatility erodes your portfolio. And if you want to get into that, I'd be happy to, to talk about that. But it's, it's something that I feel everyone should know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it seems like Wall Street every 10 years, they make you a ton of money and then they lose it all for you, you know? Right. So if you're, if you're looking for long-term investments, I mean, it's stock market, stock market to me a little bit, it's a little bit like gambling. So if you bet on the right horse, you're going to win, but if you don't, you don't have any control over it, right? So in, in a non-traditional investments like that, that we're working in, it, it works a little differently and you have some say or some control in, in how things are going to go. Tell me, talk to me a little bit about how the sort of the non-traditional investments that you're working with now, sort of what is the, the structure? How is it, how is it beneficial to uh, investors? How, how can people benefit from 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 being involved in, in a non-traditional like multifamily type type deal it, uh, in not necessarily in comparison we kind of know a conventional we talked a little bit about that but maybe the structure of how the the non-conventional investments are going in your, in your mind yeah so the structure is it's a private placement reg d under the securities law and we specifically do 506 b's which means we can have a, both accredited and sophisticated investors which i think is important because you get to provide these investments, you know, to people that you normally wouldn't be able to invest in real estate. And 
I think that's powerful. But I yeah, the, the the benefits to the to this asset class and investing this way is you actually investing in an asset. It's not a piece of paper like you'd be investing in a REIT. It's an actual asset that provides you not only cash flow, but forced appreciation. So we can go in, we can add value to the property, whether that be on the exterior or the interior, we can or raising rents, we can force appreciation. And on top of that, at the end of the day, you also get another powerful thing, which is depreciation. So the way we structure deals is we give um, our investors 50% of the depreciation. And through cost segregation analysis, where literally we have engineers that go in and break down the entire structure. So think about, you know, like your drywall, your carpeting, your wiring, plumbing, they, they give that all a life that you depreciate at a different rate. And then with the recent tax law, you get to do something called bonus depreciation where you get to take that all up front. And it's just very powerful. Last year, an investor who invested $100,000 in deals on average got $40,000 in depreciation. And that's so powerful. I know there's investors out there that solely invest just to get that depreciation. Right. Yeah. And you can use that depreciation against other income too. So yeah, it's, other passive good, income. Correct. Yeah. It's good for all your taxable income that you, that you're reporting to the IRS for that year. Right. And if you, don't have enough passive income, you can roll the remainder of that depreciation onto the next year and the next year. Right. So tell me about what you have in terms of your, your company and what you're doing. You know, for us, a big part of what we do is when we, when we start a company or when we're doing any projects, we sort of look at what, what is our value proposition? You know, what, what are we, what service or what are we providing that is a value to our customers, you know, with our residents, we try to provide them with, you know, excellent housing that they are proud to live in, that they feel safe in with our investors. We're trying to provide them with safe investment vehicles that they don't have to worry about losing 40% overnight. Like they do in the stock market that they can get good returns on reasonable returns. You know, so we, those are our values when, when we're looking at what we're doing. So tell me kind of how you, uh, approach your value proposition for your with your business and with your customers. Yeah, so for our investors, it's two things: return of investment and return on investment. And what I mean by that is return of investment, which is our number one focus, is to protect your capital. We want to give that back to you in full at all costs. So we're very conservative under underwriters and investors. And then two, return on um, investment is we want to provide you consistent return. So consistent cash flow, that mailbox money that you can rely on. And then in terms of our, our tenants and apartment communities, we're there to provide them a place that they're proud to call home. And part of our investment strategy is, is to find properties that have, you know, deferred maintenance and poor management. You know, some, some people would call that, you know, like a slumlord, but but we're, we're looking to find places we can add value and provide a community where these people are proud to live. They feel safe to live and, and they want to stay with us for a while. And it's, it's a, a great feeling to be able to, you know, walk on a property and people are thanking you for, for improving their community. So those are kind of the value props from both, both an investor standpoint and a tenant standpoint. Yeah. I think I'm convinced that if you provide residents with, someplace they feel safe and they love raising their family that the rest of the business just sort of is, is smooth sailing from there. You know, if you can, if you can do that one thing, and that's really kind of one of the things that drives me anyway, if you can do that one thing by providing, you know, the people that live in your communities with a really nice place to, to, to raise their families, I think the rest of this stuff is, is kind of easy. You know, it's just, a, it's just operations really at that point. And, and I think that's, that's, a, that's the, the cornerstone of, everything that we kind of do, but so tell me is, is, so is, is the, the value proposition, is that something that, that motivates and drives your, you, what you do and, and how you run your business? Yeah, definitely. Part of my company's mission. Well, first and foremost is, you know, to provide my investors a fiduciary obligation to, you know, protect their capital and also right. provide them a consistent return. But on top of that, you know, we want to give back to the community. You know, we, we donate, we ha have a goal to donate 10% of our, you know, profits to local communities. And then also we want to take care of our apartment communities as well. So that definitely drives us in what we do every day. Right. It gives you, and it gives you a vehicle to give back to, to local community as well. Right. Yeah. Correct. We do the same thing. 
So we've talked a lot about the investments. So what is the one thing, I guess, Sean, that you thought of uh, when you're coming on the show that you want to make sure that everybody uh, sort of walked away with uh, sort of the gold nugget, I guess you could say, uh, of, of our talk today? What do you think that would be? Yeah, it's actually twofold, if you don't mind. But it's one, when people are talking about how the market, you know, it's 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 fallen off, fallen off a cliff <laughs> and they're right. thinking oh buy 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 this is the time to buy you know as warren buffett says be greedy when people are fearful and fearful when people are greedy i do agree with that but uh there's a caveat to that you shouldn't be putting you know all your eggs in one basket which i think people forget about that it seems like they've forgotten about that pretty quickly this time so you need to diversify a portfolio and I know what financial advisors would like to say is that yeah, you diversify through different stocks and you know, different geographies and different industries. But if you look at risk metrics when you do that, standard deviation is the big one. It doesn't change that much the more you add in that sense. True diversification isn't just an alternative investment like we've been talking about. And the way you can look at that is through correlation. And for your listeners that aren't familiar with correlation, it's a very powerful tool that you should look at when you want to diversify and simply what it is it's just a relationship between two variables and the degree in which they move in relation to one another so a correlation of one means that they move in tandem correlation of negative one means that they move in opposite or mirror directions and then a correlation of zero means they are uncorrelated and their movements are unrelated so you want to you want to look at an investment that's as close as to zero as possible when you diversify and when we're looking at correlations between the S&P 500, multifamily has a correlation of 0.13%. So that's fairly uncorrelated to the market. And so when you want to diversify, I feel multifamily is a phenomenal asset class to be in. And then the second thing I want to, your listeners to walk away with is kind of what I briefly mentioned earlier is that the power of volatility, how it erodes your portfolio. And what I mean by that is if you if you had an investment all in stocks, say the S&P 500 ETF, and it dropped by 10%, it would take more than a 10% gain for you to get back to whole. And that just erodes at your portfolio. And so for this podcast, I decided to take um, a look at the last you know, 20 years from 2000 to 2009. So there's two portfolios here. One is the S&P 500. And then one is a portfolio that has a consistent, the same return every year, similar to like what I'm sure you're giving your investors in multifamily, you know, a preferred return that's, that's consistent. And so if you look at these two portfolios, the S&P 500 returned on average 7.68% over the last 20 years from again, 2000 to 2019. So that's then, like a, is that like that's like an index S and P index fund? Yeah, correct, correct. Is, are you are you accounting for managed fees in that, or is that that's that's pre fees or at post fees? That's not even fees. So if we wanted to get into that, it would be a le- it would be less. <laughs> so that yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you're there there. What is it? You said seven point six eight. That's just the S and P five hundred. That's just the index. Yeah, and depending on who's managing that that index fund for you, there could be additional fees on that. That that oh, there there wouldn't be more more than likely. But if okay. if you're just looking at the S and P five hundred, say if in some amazing world you're able to get into that without any fees, the average return is seven point six eight right. over okay, those twenty years. And then, so if you had a, a portfolio of multifamily that also averaged seven point six eight per year in return, and they and by average, I mean it literally gives you 7.68 every year. Whereas, you know, the, S, the S&P 500 portfolio, you know, it's up, up 10% one year, down 22 another. So if you look at those two portfolios, you would think they would have the same dollar value amount at the end of those 20 years, wouldn't you? Right, yeah. Well, they don't. If you look at the S&P 500 at the end of 2019, if you had invested a million dollars at the beginning of 2000, you would have $3.24 million. So if that's too big of a value, if you invested, you know, less than that, you know, just a hundred thousand, you'd be at around, you know, $324,000. Right. Yeah. And then if you look at the multifamily at a million dollars with a consistent return of 7.68%, you would have $4.4 million. That's over 
$1.2 million in difference. And it's crazy. It, people don't realize this, that it's because it's the relationship of compounding interest. And what happens when you take an average, you know, it's just looking at the average of each number, not what happens in between. So that power of volatility, right? it just erodes your portfolio. And I think that's something that people have to be very aware of. Yeah. And it's, uh, volatility is, is it, 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 it really ruins your traction, you know, with real estate, I think maybe it's Grant Cardone or some, or somebody like that. It says it's, it's, it's not get rich quick, but it's get rich for sure. Right. Real estate yeah. is just that consistent. It just kind of chugs along and, and does its thing. And you don't have those big swings. You just don't have those big ups and downs. You know, the biggest problem you have with, with real estate in the marketplace generally is just the availability of debt or, cre- you know, credit to, to buy more properties really. So it's, yeah, for an investor, it's, it's very consistent. And, and, you know, people are always worried about losing money in the real estate market. But to, if you look like you just said, historically, it stays very, very consistent. So, well, that's good. Yeah, those are good points, Sean, for, for the listeners to, to kind of uh, soak in. So, you know, t- tell me, how can people kind of get in touch with you? Or I guess we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to put some links for Sean down in the, in the comments and things too, wherever we can. But tell us, where, where can people reach out to you and, and get in touch with you if they want to discuss any of this stuff? Yeah, so Greenbrier, Greenbrier Capital Group is my company. And the website is Greenbrier, that's G-R-E-E-N-B-R-I-A-R-C-G.com. And then also got a group on Facebook, same thing, Greenbrier Capital Group. You can find me on all the social medias. And I also have a podcast as well called Millennial Millionaire. And yeah, you can which has a website as well, millennialmillionairepodcast.com. And you can find me on any of those. You know, there's a place to send message and yeah, just reach out. We'd love to, I'd love to chat. So people can also listen to you and get more information from you, more knowledge on your millennial millionaire podcast uh, as well too. Okay, great. That's wonderful. Well, thanks, Sean. We really appreciate you, you coming on the show. And, and sharing your knowledge with us and, and giving everybody kind of something to think about. This is an interesting time that we're in right now. It's going to change, of course, and we'll, you know, we'll get back to business as usual at some point, but it's fun to talk about. I'm glad you, I'm glad you were able to come on and uh, give us some insight. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. I love you. I love what you guys are doing. And I know you're going to gonna do some great things in the, in the coming years. Yeah, great. <laughs> we hope so. We're trying. Thanks so much. All right. Have a good one. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Next Level American Dream. If you would like to learn more about what we talked about today, want to contact the team directly, or are interested in passively investing and being a part of our deal room, head over to our website at www.thompsonmultifamilygroup.com. Before you go, please leave a review. Your comments help us create more episodes for you to enjoy.